Well, it's a victory day. Thanks for joining us for Victory at Home. If this is your first time joining us, hey, welcome. Let's know where you're visiting or watching us from. Tell us what city, what state, what country. Thank you for joining us for a Victory at Home. Put it in the chat, Victory at Home. This year we believe in God that you would experience victory at home. Hey, listen, before we get into the word of God, let's have a word of prayer. And if you have any special prayer requests, would you put it in, our ch in the chat and we want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the person who is Zooming or viewing us from whatever city, whatever country, whatever state. God, you know what they stand in need of. And I pray even right now in the name of Jesus that you will meet them at the point of need. I pray that you will strengthen those who need strength. I pray that you will comfort those who need comfort. I pray that you'll give peace to those who need peace. And we thank you for doing it in Jesus' precious name. And we say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, put it in the chat. It's our victory day. And thanks again for joining us. Listen, for the last couple of weeks, we have been focusing preaching and teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. Our biblical scripture is Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22, which reads, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law or no restriction. I want to encourage you to memorize this verse with me. And each week, we have been looking at each of these fruits. So far, we've looked at the first three fruit. We've looked at the fruit of love. We've looked at the fruit of joy, and we've looked at the fruit called peace. If you missed it, don't worry. You can catch it on all of it on YouTube or Facebook. Just make sure you subscribe to Victory Grace Center or I am Dr. Jazz. Well, on today, we want to look at the fourth fruit, which is long-suffering or patience. Before we do, my goodness, I want you to make sure you've got pen and paper. Galatians chapter 5 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, peace, and patience. I want to talk to you for a few minutes on the fruit called patience. And I think we can just simply call this title of this sermon, Please Be Patient With Me. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, my goodness, I shall come forth as pure gold. I want to remind you that these fruit that is found in Galatians chapter 5 is what the Spirit wants to produce in us. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you and I are not able to produce these fruit by ourselves. Have you ever tried to be patient? Have you ever tried to be loving? Have you ever tried to walk in peace? It's very challenging, but thank God that love, joy, peace, and patience is not what they call the works of the flesh, but rather the fruit of the spirit. What does that mean? It means as long as you and I stay connected, as long as we abide, as long as we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our lives, then the Holy Spirit will produce within the believer love, joy, peace, and so on. When it comes to the fourth fruit of the spirit, how many of you can testify? Put it in the chat. I will need the spirit on this one. Who can testify? In fact, I need the spirit on all nine fruit. But remember, these fruits are broken up in three categories. How many categories? In three categories. The first three fruit is connected to my relationship with God. The second three is in regards to my relationships with others. And the last three is in relationship with myself. My goodness, as we look at the second category, which is patient, long-suffering, gentleness. It has to do with my relationship with other people. How do I treat other people? How do I engage with other people? How do I interact with other people? And as we look at this fourth food called patience, I want us to look at three things in regards to patience. Number one, 
I want us to look at the complication of patience. What's the first word? Complication. Second, I want us to look at the call of patience. And then lastly, I want to look at the completion of patience. This fourth food patient, can I be transparent with you? All long suffering, my goodness, is one of my challenge. I'm from Trinidad. I don't know if it's a culture thing or a mature thing, but sometimes I can find myself in patience with other people and even with myself. Can I have a witness out there that sometime you are impatient. It's hard to wait on God. It's even harder to wait on yourself and sure enough it's hard to wait on others. When we look at the word patience or long suffering in the King James Version we have to view it from two different perspectives. How many perspectives put it in the chat? We've got to view it from two different perspective. When we talk about patience or long suffering, we have to view it, number one, in relations with our problem. Come on, give me the first piece. We've got to look at it in relationship or in relations with our problem. And secondly, when we look at the word patience, we have to look at it in relations with other people. I want to look at the word patience first in regards to our problems and then and I want to look at it in regards to people. You see, my brothers and sisters, the word patience has two sides to it. Patience in respect to problems and patience in respect to people. We are going to look at both of them. And can I be honest with you? It's easy to have patience with your problem than have patience with people. Anybody want to testify out there? Put it in the chat. It's easy to have patience in your problem than have patience with people. In fact, go ahead and put it in the chat and tell me which one is the most difficult for you. Is it having patience while you're going through something or, or is it having patience with people? Let's first look at the first one, which is often the easier one for some of us. You see, the first side of patience is in regards to problem, situation, or circumstance. When it has to do with our problems, the word patience can be translated as endurance. Give me that word, endurance. Whenever you think of patience in regards to your problem, I want you to particularly think of the word endurance. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse number 10 says, I endure everything. Come on, put it in the chat. I'm enduring everything. Paul says, and Timothy Timothy, I have endured everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. In this text, the writer focus on how to be patient or how to endure in respect to situations, circumstances, and problems. Oh, I got to say that again. In this text, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 10, the writer focuses on on how you and I can be patient or, oh, my goodness, endure in respect to situation circumstances or problems. This form of patience means to preserve. Give me that word in the chat. It means to remain. It means to bear up under. It refers to the quality of character which does not allow one to surrender to the problem, the circumstances, or to succumb under trial. It's the word and the attitude that is described of Jesus in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, for the joy that is set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My goodness, listen, Jesus endured the cross. And there's somebody up the song to my voice. I don't know what country you're looking from. I don't know where you're tuning in from, but you are enduring difficult times. You are enduring hard times. You are enduring struggles and trials and problems. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that the attitude of Jesus when 
he was going through something. It says, for the joy that is set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here it is, my brothers and sisters. Jesus, in spite of what he is facing, endured it. My God, can you put it in the chat? I'm going to endure it. I'm going to go through it. He did not succumb to it. He did not buckle. He did not fall apart. He did not fall into pieces. He did not lose his mind. He did not go crazy. And my brothers and sisters, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what problem you're facing on your job. I don't know what difficulty you're facing in your home. I want you to know that when you think of the word patient or when you think of the word patience, it is equivalent to endurance. Why and how is it possible that Jesus endured. How is it possible that Jesus preserved? It's because underneath the word patient is the word hope. Give me the word hope. It says for the joy that was set before him. You see, Jesus looked beyond the cross. And that's a word for somebody right out there. That whatever you're going through, you've got to look beyond where you are right now. The Bible said for the joy that was set before him, he endured what he was going through. You see, this patient or endurance is connected to hope. We can endure what we are going through through. Uh, we can be patient in our problem uh, because we understand uh, that everything is going to work together for our good. Uh, ooh, I feel like preaching right here. Uh, I said the reason why we can be patient uh, in what we are going through, uh, the reason why we can endure the problems we are facing uh, is because we realize what Romans 8.28 says, uh, and we know uh, that all things things work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Is there anybody at the sound of my voice who can testify that you've got hope that wherever you are, it is not your destiny, it is just your itinerary. What did I say? It's just, it's just your itinerary. Put it in the chat. It is just my itinerary. You see, my brothers, you see, my brothers and sisters. You see, this, this patience or this endurance or, or this preservation uh, that is tied to hope uh, is the realization. You've got to understand what hope is. Uh, it's the realization. Uh, it's, it's a realization when we talk about hope. Uh, we are talking about a hope or a desire desire of some good uh, with expectation of obtaining it. Uh, this hope is not focused uh, on what might happen, uh, but this hope is focused uh, on what must happen. My goodness. Uh, in a nutshell, we are saying uh, that the first side of patient is endurance. It means to bear up under difficult things. It means to bear up under circumstances. It means to bear up under problem. And the reason why I can bear up, the reason why I can endure, the reason why I can preserve, the reason why I can stay strong is because I've got a hope. Is there anybody out there who said I've got a hope or I got an expectation that things will change, it will get better. Who am I preaching to put it in the chat? Things will change and things will get better. Put it in the chat. I said things will change. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Who am I talking to? Uh, and I, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think a perfect example, uh, a prime example uh, of this patience of endurance or long suffering uh, when I'm facing problem uh, is by the brother Job. You know Job. Uh, I want you to read James chapter 5. Uh, and James chapter 5, we are told uh, that Job endured problems. In fact, Job is known uh, as, my goodness, a patient man. Uh, the Bible said that Job endured problems uh, and difficult situations.
occasion. Uh, James chapter 5 verse 11 says, uh, as you know, we count as blessing uh, those who have preserved, uh, those who have bid up, uh, those who have bid under. Uh, you have heard of Job's patience. Uh, you have heard of Job's endurance. Uh, you have heard of Job's perseverance uh, and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. Uh, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Uh, you got to read it in James chapter 5 verse 11. Uh, it gives us a description of Job. Uh, now all of us are familiar with Job. Uh, in the book of Job, Job lost everything. Uh, he lost people. Uh, he lost possession. Uh, he lost position. Uh, my goodness, Job was facing problems. Uh, and yet the Bible said in Job chapter 23, uh, after Job lost people, uh, after Job lost possession, uh, after Job lost a position, uh, in Job chapter 23 verse 8, uh, the one thing that Job did not lose was his hope. Uh, Job declared in Job chapter 23 verse 8, uh, he said, my goodness, I cannot find God, uh, but God can find me. Uh, and Job said, for he knows the way that I take. And when he has Come on, somebody put it in the chat. When he is trying me, uh, and when he is trying me, uh, I shall come forth uh, as pure gold. Uh, I need somebody to put it in the chat. Uh, whatever I'm going through, uh, I'm going to come through it. Uh, who am I preaching to this morning? Uh, who am I preaching to tonight? Uh, who am I talking to? Whatever you're going through, uh, you shall come through it. Uh, the Bible said that Job says uh, that when he is trying me, and that's a word for somebody who is being tried. That's a word for somebody who is being tested. That's a word for somebody who is going through problems. Who is facing circumstances. Job said don't you lose your hope. Because Job said in the midst of struggle. That he declared that he will come forth as pure gold. I need somebody to put it in the chat. I shall come forth. Peter said in First Peter chapter 4. He said, after you have suffered, come on, put it, a chat, put it in the chat. He said, after you have suffered a while, come on, I need somebody to put it in the chat just a little while longer. Come on, put it in the chat just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. Peter said, after you have suffered a while, after you've gone through something, Peter said, God is going to bring you out. He is going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to build you up. Who am I talking to at the song of my voice? That is the first definition of patience. The first definition of patience is endurance. And my goodness, while you're going through what you're going through, it means patient without complaining. This is a patient of calmness. But now let's talk about the call to patience. Let's talk about the other side of patience. With first patient, we look at patient in regards to problems. But now let's look at patience in regards to people. Now listen, when God has a choice, which you have in patience in your problem or patience with people, he wants you to have patience with people. You see, the Holy Spirit shows up to help you have patience with people. This is the first understanding, patience in your problem. But the second understanding is patience with people. This is where most of us get tripped up. We sometimes like patience with people. This is the patience that the Spirit wants to produce in our life. This form of patience is showing empathy give me the word empathy uh, towards others uh, when they are not doing things to our standard uh, it's the kind of patience uh, that is produced in us uh, through the Holy Spirit uh, when we support the growth in others uh, as they are on their own journey in life uh, notice everyone including our children uh, are on their own journey of their life uh, Everybody is on their own journey. Everybody is in self-awareness. 
Everybody is in a journey of self-discovery. Everybody is growing from glory to glory. And oftentimes we are impatient with other people because we assume they should be doing better or they should be further along. This is patience that the Holy Spirit wants to produce in us as we walk with others. Give me that word walk. As we worship with others. Give me the word worship. And as we work with others. Can I ask you? your question. Uh, is there anybody that you're in relationship with that they are plucking your last nerve? Uh, is there anybody that you are in worship with uh, that sometimes they're plucking your last nerve? Uh, is there anybody that you're working on your job even if it's in Zoom uh, that they are plucking your last nerve? Uh, the patience that the Holy Spirit want to produce uh, in you and I is patience with others and ourselves. Uh, and I believe we're going to need patience more than ever as the country particularly in the USA is reopening. My goodness more people are on the street driving. More people are in the airport. Some of you are back at work and my goodness already people are plucking your nerve. I want the Holy Spirit to equip us so we can be long suffering when it comes to others. And this patient listen the first patient we talk about that is in regards to problem uh, is connected to hope. Uh, but this second patient, which is the fruit of the spirit, uh, is connected to mercy. Give me the word mercy. Uh. You see, the first form of patient is connected with hope. Uh, that hope God is going to bring me out and hope that God is going to bring me through. Uh, but this second patient in regards to people uh, has to do with mercy. Give me the word mercy. Uh, the word mercy carries the meaning uh, of compassion. Give me the word compassion. Uh, this food called patient uh, is towards our families and our friends uh, and even our cats and our dogs. Uh, the other day I was waiting for Simba to poop uh, and my God I had somewhere to go uh, and I was waiting, waiting. It was 30 minutes. Uh, it was 40 minutes I, I was growing impatient. A uh, couple of days ago I was turning on my laptop uh, and it would not come on. I said what's wrong with this crazy computer? I was going impatient. Uh, I was in the line of Chick-fil-A uh, trying to order a salad uh, and my goodness there was 20 cars in front of me uh, and they were not moving uh, and I was trying to say what's wrong with Chick-fil-A? Uh, I was growing impatient. Is there anybody out there that sometimes my goodness, instead of walking in patience uh, with people, we are impatient. Uh, how do we respond to our problems? Uh, how do we respond to our circumstances? Uh, but most importantly, uh, how do we respond to other people uh, who sometimes do not move as fast as we do? Uh, now, I got to be honest here. I'm from Trinidad. Uh, I'm the daughter of thunder, so I move like thunder and lightning. Uh, and sometimes I got people around me uh, who are moving like snail uh, but my and they irritate me can I be honest out there my goodness in fact when I was getting ready to preach a sermon I, I was waiting for them to get the camera together I was waiting for them to get the backdrop together and I said I can't go off because I'm preaching on patience. Is there anybody uh, God will create circumstance uh, to see if you got patient. Uh, remember you cannot be patient in of yourself. Uh, you need the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and so this second form of patient, patient with people uh, has to do in regards uh, to how we respond to people uh, who are on on their own journey. Uh, how many of you can testify that you need more patience with your spouse? Uh, you need a little bit more patience with your children. Uh, you need a little bit more patience with your dog. Uh, you need a little bit more patience with Joe Biden. Uh, you need a little more patience on your job. Uh, many of us will agree that we struggle uh, in waiting for God uh, and waiting for people. Anybody want to testify? Many of us struggle with waiting for God. And my goodness, we struggle with waiting for people. The reason, however, you and I can be patient with others and ourselves is because, listen, check the revelation. It's because the Lord has been patient with us. Oh, I dare you to shout right there. Put it in the chat. The reason why I can be patient with other people is because the Lord's been patient with us. Has the Lord been 
been patient with anybody. It's why right there in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 9. In 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 9 it says the Lord is slow. Dare you to put it in the chat. The Lord is slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. But he is long suffering. I dare you to put that word he's long suffering. In other words he is patient. Not wanting anyone to perish. But everyone to come to eternal life. We are not waiting on God. God has been waiting on us. My goodness you see mercy has prompted God's patience. A perfect example is Genesis chapter 6. The Bible said that God told Noah he's about to destroy the earth. But my goodness it took God 120 years. Somebody put it in the chat. It took God 120 years before he would send the flood. It's because God is patient. Oh I wish somebody can testify that the Lord has been long suffering towards me. The Bible says my goodness it is because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Another word for mercy is patient. It is because of the Lord's patience. And there's somebody to put it in the chat. I haven't done everything that I'm supposed to do. I haven't crossed every I haven't crossed every T. I haven't done it every I. But I thank God. I need somebody to put it in the chat. I thank God that he was long suffering and he's still waiting on me. I need somebody to put it in the chat. God is still waiting on me. Now I've got to get ready to close but the opposite of patient is judgment. What's the opposite of patient? The opposite of patient is judgment. When we are impatient with other people we are judging them. What did I say? I said when we are impatient with other people uh, we are judging them uh, and the Bible said judge not others uh, unless you be judged. Uh, my brothers and sisters we've got to leave the judgment uh, of people's walk with God. Uh, we've got to leave the judgment uh, of people's life with God. Uh, we've got to leave people judge the judgment uh, of what people are doing in the hands of God. Uh, the Bible said who are you uh, to judge another man uh, and if God waited for you and I 120 years surely we can wait for our spouse for 20 minutes surely we can wait for our children for 5 seconds my brothers and sisters thank God for patience and when I am filled with patience I will leave the judgment of somebody's life I will leave the progress of their life I will leave the movement of their life into the hands of God I wonder if there's anybody out there who can testify because God's been patient with me because I'm a recipient of patience. Come on, put it in the chat. I'm a recipient of the Lord's mercy. If it was not for the Lord's mercy, I would have lost my mind. If it was not for the Lord's mercy, I would have gone crazy. If the Lord wasn't patient with me, he would have destroyed me a long time. But I'm so glad. I said I'm so glad every morning I wake wake up. New mercy. I wish I had somebody out there who said new mercy I see. Morning by morning. New mercy. New mercy. New mercy. New mercy. New mercy. New mercy. New patient. He's so patient with you and I. How, how patient are you with other people? Ha, 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 ha. How long suffering are you with other people? It reminds me when I first started my church last year in virtual space on Zoom. It was our first time and my goodness, one of our deacon came in and she was supposed to be muted and she wasn't muted and they were trying to mute her and they couldn't mute her. And you know what? I, I said, put out. Yes, I did. I said, put out. And that was a sign of my immaturity when it comes to patient. Well, well, listen, listen, listen. We want to close by looking at the completion of patient. My goodness, we looked at the complication. We look at the call of patient, but now we want to look at the completion of patient. It's right in James chapter 1 verse number 2 and 4. It says count it all joy. My God put it in the chat. Count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation knowing that the testing of your faith is producing 
impatient. My God, somebody put it in the chat. My problem is producing something. Uh, the people in my life is producing something. Uh, and James said, but let patient do its thing uh, so that you will be mature and complete, uh, not lacking anything. I want you to put it in the chat. Uh, problem and people uh, God is using to produce something. Uh, ooh, that's why God's not going to erase all your problem. Uh, that's why God's not going to remove all the people uh, because problem and people uh, is producing patient. Put it in the chat. Uh, I said problem and people is producing patient. Uh, he said count it all joy uh, when you fall into diverse temptation. Uh, knowing this uh, that your faith is producing patient. Uh, but let patient do its work. I need somebody to put it in the chat. I'm going to let patience do it work. I'm going to let patience have its way because when patience get through with me, I'm going to be able to endure my problem and I'm going to be able to my goodness have mercy towards people. So as I close, all I want to say to you is please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet but when God get through put it in the chat, but when God get through, when God get Get through with my children, uh, when God get through with my spouse, uh, when God get through with me, uh, I shall come forth as pure, as pure, as pure, as pure, as pure gold, as pure gold, as pure gold. Hey, listen, you got endurance in your problem, and I want you to have mercy with your people. Oh, it's, it's not that easy. And that's why you need the fruit of the Spirit. That's why you need the Spirit dwelling in you. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and long suffering. There's some mother out there, you've been suffering. You've been long suffering with your children. There, there's a daddy out there, you've been long suffering. There's a spouse, you're long suffering. There's some pastor, some preacher. Oh, my goodness. And you're wondering when it's going to end. Don't you lose hope. And don't you stop showing mercy. Because God has been merciful to you. Father, I thank you for the fourth fruit of the spirit. And God, as we go back into society, as we get on the highways, as we engage with family members and people. Oh God, Holy Spirit, fill us with your fruit of patience. Even with our pets and our dogs and People who don't agree with us and people who have different perspective and people who have different angles. You've been patient with us. You waited for us a long time. And so help us, God. And God, we don't mind waiting on you because you've been waiting on us. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hey, everybody, thanks so very much for joining us. Do me a favor. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe. And lastly, if this has been a blessing to you, would you consider supporting this ministry? All the information is on the screen on how you can give. You can give financially to this ministry. And we thank you for giving. And your giving is helping us do ministry, helping us carry out the mission. We're supporting ministry in Grenada and in Trinidad. My goodness, and all the information, victorygracecenter.org. Don't just be a consumer, but be a contributor. And then if you get tired of just watching me and would love to join us where you can worship with us, we created a church called VLive 120. It's a virtual church on the Zoom platform, 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock every Sunday. All you need to do is go to Victory Grace Center and register for V Live 120, where 120 of us gather in Zoom, where it's live preaching, live teaching, live pastor, and live people. We would love for you to join us. In the meantime, remember, it's a victory day, and you've got victory at home. Thank you.